Ah, yes. Welcome to Chapter 2, my friends, of Spider-Man Strikes Back. Not to be confused with The Empire Strikes Back. I mean, that's a far more superior film, I believe. In spite of the damage Kathleen Kennedy is doing to the Star Wars brand, but <clears throat> that's beside the point. Um, let us continue. So the Bee Gees and Shrivel Dick try to kidnap both Peter and Gale. So Barry Gibb punches a hole in the wall to try to beat up Peter Parker, but they make a break for it. Oh yes. It's just a few feet on the ledge to the fire escape. Don't worry. I'm not Spider-Man! I'm totally not Spider-Man! I'm Spider-Man! Fortunately, Peter and Gale do manage to catch a taxi cab. She compliments Peter in a way that you know that they're going to get it on later. And even the cab driver smiles like, yes, he knows Peter's going to get something tonight. And let's check in on our young friends working on the plutonium to create their own atom bomb. How are things going? But Captain Barbera has found out where Peter is. And he also brought Detective DeSoto with him, or whatever his name is. DiCarlo, excuse me. Is it entirely possible that this film just might get any better? No, I don't think so. But Barbera has tracked out where Peter is staying, and he brought Detective DiCarlo with him. On the couch, Captain. Sure, sure, sure. Whatever you say, Peter. Ooh, nice blouse Gale is wearing. Arousal level five. Anyway... Barbara assumes that Peter has something to do with the missing plutonium, which is why the Bee Gees and Shrivel Dick have been chasing him around. So with that, Peter is arrested. And because of his connection to Spider-Man. And so J. Jonah Jameson demands to see Peter at once. And here's why he demands to see him at once. No, but you do look a bit like Admiral Didana from Star Wars. And anyway, Satin Blouse Gale tries to basically reason with Jolly Jonah, but there's no consoling him. So he officially fires Peter. Peter wishes to keep his press card as a souvenir, but Jonah's not going to have any of that. Oh well, the college students are finally finished assembling Vector Sigma. And well, unfortunately Blondie's not feeling so good. So once they've finished constructing it, well, that's when Blondie gets very, very sick from radiation poisoning. So their screw-up causes Carla to get very sick. So they've got to get her to the hospital, and fast! Shame on you, Vector Sigma! My lord, that is Vector Sigma! Or rather to say that bomb looks like him. Gale tries to console Peter, but even making a little joke, but Peter is in no mood for humor. You know what I wish? I wish I'd never heard of it. Now that's the Peter Parker of the comics. So Carla's been taken to the hospital, and of course Peter's stunt double and Horshack are obviously concerned, and that's when Peter himself gets the call. And I don't believe this. 
Barry Gibb is following Peter, and yet his spider sense never tingles. Boo, boo, boo. So Peter chews them out over experimenting with the radiation. Yep. But it's more fun to go out into the hall and chew them out in public. That way everyone else and that way everyone can see. Uh, Barry Gibb is right there on the phone booth and his spider sense doesn't even tingle. Once again, boo! Gail comes along with good news that Herpin that her publisher has given her $5,000 to grant that interview with Spider-Man. And that's good news? What about Peter getting his job back? Jeez, Gail, you are bad at this. And so Peter waits for this orderly to leave the bathroom. That way he can get all spider man up. No sooner does Peter as Spider-Man lump and leap out the window that Gail shows up. You shouldn't be in the men's room, my dear. But then again, I suppose nowadays that sort of thing is tolerated. And so now it's time for Mr. White and his henchmen to track down Spider-Man and the, and the bomb. So the other two BGs climb up the fire escape. But of course, Shrivel Dick probably isn't in the best shape for this sort of thing. And Spider-Man is running around on the rooftop. Oh well, at least he's not assuming that bear hug position. And seriously, what is up with the music? It sounds like a Daffy Duck cartoon. Spidey puts a tracker, you know, one of his fancy spider tracers, on the car so that he can follow their movements. And apparently he will need it as the Bee Gees and Shrivel Dick are stealing Vector Sigma. What the hell was that sound? Seriously, did Spider-Man just eat a live chicken? What was that sound? Oh, I suppose that sound was actually Morris Gibb the Ninja trying to take on Spidey. I just love to start every day with a warm hug. But of course, Barry Gibb drops Spider-Man off the building. Fortunately, Spider-Man manages to save himself by netting himself a web, but his camera is broken in the process. And yes, Spider-Man is more PO'd that quite frankly, his camera is broken as opposed to the villains getting away. Tough break, Spidey. And so now the two teenage boys are in jail as well. No word yet on whether or not Peter's been released. I think he has. The neutron reflector was made of wax, right? Inside of an aluminum hemisphere. Basically, that's a very simple implosion. Well, essentially, it was just modeling clay. But still, with the right kind of mechanics and chemics and chemical devices... Yes, that stuff actually really, really could be a bomb. Our detective inspector from Miami is not best pleased at this news. Gail shows up at Peter's apartment, extremely angry over being dumped at the hospital. And now she's wearing a plain white blouse instead of the, instead of the, instead of the silk one. Uh, arousal level four. I bet you say that to all the girls, Petey. Yeah, so Shrivel Dick basically is ready to make the deal with the buyer. 
even if it is a little disappointing because he's not going to get as much money as he thought he would. He's got all the money in the world. Does he really need more? He's like George Soros, except he knows he's evil. So Peter gets his job back at the Bugle, and J. Jonah Jameson makes a little deal with him. Well, actually, more like Peter makes a deal with Jolly Jonah. The deal is that, well, to be and to pay for a trip out to Los Angeles, since Peter now knows where the plutonium is. This is not a con job, as J.J. thinks. You've got as much chance of going to California at my expense as you have of walking upside down on that ceiling. Like I said, Peter might as well just be wearing a t-shirt that reads, I am Spider-Man. Wait a minute now, you can't print that. I mean, public would panic. But if I help find the bomb, then the Bugle would have an exclusive. Which it could share with the examiner. But why California? Spider-Man told me about the license number. Spider-Man? Did you got this from Spider-Man? Well, we, we sort of worked it out together, yes. I wouldn't believe anything that that weirdo tells me. I would. <laughs> That's more like the J. Jonah James than I know. So Gail convinces Jolly Jonah to finance the trip out to Los Angeles on the grounds that she gets the interview, then the Bugle gets this great exclusive, and so does the Weekly Examiner. So, Jolly Jonah agrees to finance the trip out to Los Angeles on one condition. He goes with them. So Peter, Gale, and Jolly Jonah all arrive in Los Angeles. And at first it looks like they're just here to, in and to admire the scenery and the view. Gale decides to mean that everyone should meet at the pool. Jolly Jonah agrees. Parker says he has something to do, but this is... Yes, Parker, you need to get out there. See a lot of chicks. You know? Pleasure before work, you know? <laughs> and by the way, doesn't anyone else think it's a little strange that Jolly Jonah is still wearing his suit and tie. What the? There's so much I have to wonder about with this film. Like, will it get any better? Will Peter ever have good fashion sense? Will Gail put that nice little silky blouse back on again?